One of the uh, themes of the exhibit was perceptions, also known as the art of blur. And this was one of the photos in that exhibit that uh, was interactive and engaged people. And I really, exhibiting in a place of, you know, uh, where you had people from all different walks of life and all different nations, I really wanted to say something positive about our interrelations and how we see each other in the world. And that we do see things differently. And that really, I think that's how the puzzle's cut. We're not separate, but the same, connected by our differences, if we, if we learn to understand that. So this photo was a great example of that. And I say that every, everyone sees things differently. That's what makes us all alike. So I've heard hundreds of different things uh, applied to this photo. So I'm just going to ask around the room just to get a couple of, see what people see here. How about Ruth? A tumbleweed, and I've heard that before. Tumbleweed. I've heard that. Anybody else? A dog. A dog is actually the most common thing said. What is it? I can't hear him, sorry. A running rooster. I haven't heard that yet. See, and every time I think I've heard it all, someone gives me something new. A running bride. A running bride. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard that yet either. Yes. A monkey who has a set. See, I'm hearing all kinds of new things today. This is great. So, anyone else? Okay. But I tell you, I've heard hundreds of. Yeah. A person praying, and I have heard that. But I've heard everything from parachute out of a back of a dragster, a bridegroom and their wedding night rolling on the floor with a bottle of champagne beside them. Uh, Dog day, like I say, is the most common thing said. An eagle, a wad of toilet paper on a snow sled, it goes on and on. So that's, uh, and I just say that it's perception. Um, and I, I did a, a year long documentary at a park shortly after having the exhibit at Empire State Building. And interestingly enough, the park was called Perception Park. And, uh, and during this time, I would go down to the park like three to four times a week and just photograph everything that looked like a picture to me. I'd walk the trail, some things I would, you know, photograph, some areas I would photograph every time I was there just to see the transition. And I really became appreciative of, like, life, you know, by focusing on this detail of, of life and just the transition. And even things like, you know, I had a friend that liked snow. I wasn't really that crazy about it until I did this. And then I became appreciative of all those things. And even when it was raining, I was like, oh, i got to go out and photograph that now, too, you know. And uh, so it just really filled me up with this beauty of, of life. And, uh, and these photos have, you know, then are now, of course, used to help others to open their own senses to that as well. Which also, you know, trail therapy is uh, an aspect of that as well. Just getting out and just, you know, letting life absorb you. I realized when I did that, it took about an hour, at least an hour, to get rid of the stress that was in your mind, the things that were, you know, overwhelming you in the day, and you have to get out and roam those trails for about an hour until that starts to become you, and it fills you up. And I actually worked with a gentleman called, uh, named Steve Love Life Fugate. You can look up trailtherapy.org for his story. And uh, he, actually trail therapy, that's, you know, what he's promoting. But he's walked 17,000 miles across our country carrying a sign that says Love Life. And it uh, affects a lot, of, a lot of people along the way. But I'll never forget the day that I walked into the park and just looking up at the, the clouds through the trees and I just thought, Perception Park is life. And life is Perception Park, if we look at it that way. But, you know, most of us walk through life and don't really even see it. But this was a, actually uh, a portrayal of that, of the uplifting that I received during that time. And I call it Reach for Life. And this is a good example of how we don't see the beauty around us. Because I didn't know what I was getting into when I was doing this, this documentary. Uh, but I decided to do a year there. And actually, the last year, or the last day of the year, I was shooting bulldozers taking out trees because they were doing construction there. And this picture, which is a lot of people really uh, enjoy, can never be taken again because the trees are no longer there. So it was just a reflection in the water and the moon right in the center. And this was actually taken on the very last day. And it's oil that was left from one of the bulldozers in a puddle. So there's even beauty in that. But, you know, I, I kind of say that, uh, you know, whatever we think of creationism, we have to really actually uh, 
we have to really realize that as humans, we're not really capable of creating anything. We just arrange the elements that we've been given, and we're not really that good at it because though this looks beautiful, it's just oil and water. And this is a sign that actually they were discarded, and I found in a, in a uh, pile of rubble and took home, and it now resides in my, my flower garden, which I call Perception Garden. And this is one of the reasons that I'm here today, that five years ago, I actually I had a chance meeting with David Copperfield in Indianapolis. And on the way home, I was thinking, you know, there's got to be a reason that, that I met him. I don't know what it is, but I went home and looked up his website and found this here about Project Magic. And uh, this last line, which says, in the future, Project Magic will be exploring other entertainment and artistic areas that can be utilized in the rehabilitation process. And I just, you know, immediately thought photography. It had been a great uplifting to me. And I started, you know, I was thinking, you know, what if you're, you were living an active life and then you became disabled, you can't use your legs or whatever, and you become depressed. But you know, it only takes one eye and a finger to take a photo. But the results, you know, can be amazing. And photography is amazing because it's open to, you know, the interventionalist perception. It can be anything you want it to be. And so I just started thinking about that, and then over the past five years, advancing um, different uh, different areas of that. Now I've been called a magic photographer, so I thought I would dress the part too. Okay, so I have my magic hat and my magic wand, and I need a volunteer. Would like somebody would like to come up here and help me? Want to come up here and help me? If you have an imagination, if you don't, sit back down, because it won't work. Okay. So here's my magic wand, and you can see this is just a fluorescent light bulb, right? Okay, so we're going to use our imagination, but you've got to make sure you have one, and this won't work. See, now together, what I want you to do is just wave that slowly over the top of my head. You don't have to touch it, but I'm kind of tired, so kind of slow maybe, and, and just think about lighting it, okay? Is it working for you? I can see light in it. You can see light in it? Absolutely. Is it from the spotlight or is it actually from your imagination? I don't know. Oh, well, here, come on. Did, did anybody else see it? The spotlight's pretty... Uh, yeah. There you go. Ah, you do have an imagination. Thank you. So those are just, you know, that's just a little thing, of course, we do with the kids to inspire imagination. Not just the kids, but the adults, of course, too. Because the important thing is to, to believe in your imagination. Because Nothing is impossible, and, you know, and it all starts in the imagination. As Einstein says, imagination is more important than knowledge, and there's my brain activity. So, and here is a rainbow on the floor we call carpet diem. Of course, I have OCD. It's uh, obsessive car carpe diem. And this is called geese in park. Does it look like they're in an invisible car? And uh, this is something I do with my classes to, show, to teach them how to look at things uh, differently. And I ask them to look for things that look like letters of the alphabet. But challenging myself, I wanted the letter to represent what the subject was. So here we have an A for ape. See the ape face in the room? Anybody ever heard the legend of the dogwood? The legend says that Jesus was crucified in the wood of a dogwood tree, which grew tall and strong like an oak in his time, and out of remorse for being used that way, it never grew the same again. It grew small and twisted, and its uh, flowers represent a cross with nail holes in the outer petals and a crown of thorns in the center, and they bloom at Easter. And this is a dogwood, and my dog, who was jerking my arm, and I was getting upset, but she knew what she was doing, because she really added to this shot. But this is a dogwood. If you see that branch that just kind of mirrors the arch of that building across the street, it's a church that says Jesus saves. See, we live in a world of multiple dimensions. Dimension is just a, uh, a measurement, really, so there are countless dimensions. It's just a matter of being open and aware to seeing them. This is called Heaven's Heart. Look like the veins of a heart. Do we have any doctors? Yeah. I've had three doctors tell me that that's pretty true. An impression, actually, and one person had open heart surgery. Uh, but except that it would be like that <laughs> if it were your heart. But uh, isn't that what really trees are anyway? Just veins connecting the earth to the sky. 